Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let us welcome Pastor Gabriel as you're going to do our Bible study for tonight. God bless you, sir. Amen. Welcome. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. First of all, I just want to give thanks to Jesus. Give him all the glory. He is worthy to be praised. We thank God for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, who guides us, who helps us, who is our teacher. And um, we give him all the praises this evening in the name of Jesus. And also, I just also want to appreciate Bishop for giving me this opportunity to be able to um, share in the Bible studies tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And um, you know, Brother James has been has been um, teaching us on prayer, and um, it's been a blessing that um, Brother James has really taught us in um, the Bible studies on prayer. And so most of the times, you know, when we're going through things, you begin to remember all these teachings and you put them to work, amen? And you see how God moves and God begins to work it out for you, amen? So we give God all the praises. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me clearly? Is it loud enough? Hallelujah. Is it, am I loud enough? If you continue in that tone, fine, but don't drop it, please. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me loud enough? Okay, thank you, Lord. So as I was saying, I said them, um, Brother James, says, um, the teaching on prayer has been so helpful, you know, for this week as we've looked at prayer, different kind of prayer. And um, we thank God for your life, Brother James. May the Lord continue to use you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Amen. Today we'll be doing, um, we'll be looking at the gift of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, we're not, I'm, I'm not going to finish the gift of the spirit. I'm going to take them in different sessions. Then we will go back to the kinds of prayer. I think um, Dick and Reg will carry on with the kinds of prayer. But for the next three weeks, we'll be doing the gifts of the spirit. Between three to four weeks, we'll be doing the gift of the spirit. Then we'll go back to the kinds of prayer to finish it off. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And then... Um, We'll be able to come back again to the gift of the spirit and we'll finish it up. Amen. That's how we're going to go about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this evening, um, on the gift of the spirit, we will be looking at um, the Bible text that we'll be looking at for this topic is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1 to 14. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be looking at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. We will be going, sound setting, you can increase. Okay, let me look at that. How do you, where do you go that? Sound setting, okay, I think, okay, let me, audio settings. How about now? Is that very loud now? Is that better? Loud and clear, very loud. Okay, very good. So it's my computer then, yeah? Thanks for that advice, Brother James. You see all these media team people, you know? <laughs> They've got all the tips and uh, under their arms. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I was saying, yeah, we'll be going in and out of these particular scriptures so that we can actually understand where we're going about the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? And... Um, I also want us to know one central truth about the gift of the spirit is that the gift of the spirit are given to profit the whole church. Amen. I want you to put that, write that down. The central truth for the gift of the spirit is one is it is that the gift of the spirit are given to profit the whole church. Hallelujah. It's not for one person to have a gift and just uh, for show for themselves and, oh, yes, I have this gift. And no, that's not what it is for. The gift of the spirit is there to profit the whole church. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you operate in the gift of the spirit, it is to help the whole church. It is to edify the church. It is to bring comfort to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul, inspired by the Spirit to write to the church at Corinth, said, 
Now concerning spiritual gift, this is in verses one. Look at, let's actually open and let's look at that verses one of First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at it. My Bible. First Corinthians chapter 12. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 12. It says, now about spiritual gift, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It says, now about spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant of it. So first of all, Paul wants everybody, he wants the church to know about the gift of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The gift of the spirit is not meant for some special people. Right now here, Paul was actually speaking to the church of Corinth. He was speaking to the body of Christ. He wasn't speaking to an individual. He was speaking to the whole church. And now he's saying to the whole church, he says, now concerning spiritual gift, I do not want you to be uninformed about it or ignorant about it. So if you don't know about something, you can operate in it. Hallelujah. And that's the principle Paul is bringing up here. That is important that we know about it. So if we can understand what the gift of the spirit is, what they all are, it will be easier for us to identify it when it's in operation in the church. You know, there are some strange gifts that are not of God that are in operation in some churches. If you don't know what the gift of the spirit is, you would think it is, the, it is, it is this gift that is in operation. So that's why Paul wants us to be, doesn't want us to be ignorant of this gift. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So if the spirit of God through Paul said that he didn't want the church at Corinth to be ignorant concerning spiritual gift, I certainly, we certainly believe that or we certainly know that he wants the church today, this day church, to also know about the gift of the spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. We thank you, Lord. So, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just looking at the notes here. So, in some play, in some places, people know nothing at all about them. Not even that such gift exists. People don't even know that such gift exists, this, this gift of the spirit. Hallelujah. They don't know. They think this gift has been done away with. Some people think that this gift are not in operation in today's Christianity. They think that it's been done away with. And um, you, will, you won't believe it when you actually hear people say, they say to you that, oh, you know, um, we don't believe that this gift um, is in operation in these days because it has ceased. That's what they say. And it's important for you to know that in, in, in today, God wants this gift to be in operation. In fact, in these last days, this gift will be much more in use in the church. We will see it in operation in the church in these last days. Amen. And it's not, um, it's not a coincidence that we are actually studying about the gift of the spirit now because we have to prepare ourselves for the move of the spirit in these last days. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other places, they know something about some of them, but their knowledge is very limited. So a lot of people's knowledge about it is limited. Some people have an idea of what it is. Some people do not know what it is. Some people have a little idea of what it is, amen. So we're gonna read now 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses one to 14. And I would ask somebody with an Amplified Bible to please read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses one to 14. Where's Helen and Matt, Dick and Maxine? Where are they? I have an amplified um, uh, bishop. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Did you say reading from the amplified, uh, Pastor Gabriel? Yes, sir. Uh, and that was chapter 12, 
First Corinthians chapter 12. What are the verses again, Pastor Gabriel? This is 1 to 14. 1 to 14. It reads as follows. <clears throat> now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments given by the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led off after speechless idols. However, you were led off, whether by impulse or habit. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is my Lord, except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special, to, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in believers. But it is the same spirit who grants them and empowers believers. Mm. And there are distinctive varieties of ministries and service, but it is the same Lord who is served and there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things but it is the same God who produces all things in all believers inspiring energizing and empowering them Amen. but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit the spiritual illumination and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good to one is given through the Holy Spirit the power to speak, the message of wisdom, and to another the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Spirit. To another, wonder work in faith is given by the same Holy Spirit, and to another the extraordinary gifts of healings by the one Spirit, and to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people, and to another, discernment of spirits, the ability to distinguish sound, godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religions and cults, to another, various kinds of unknown tongues, and to another, interpretation of tongues. All these things, the gifts, the achievement, achievements, the abilities, the empowering are brought about by one and the same Holy Spirit distributing to each one individually, just as he chooses. For just as the body is one and yet as many parts and all the parts through many form one body. So it is with Christ. For by one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, spiritually transformed, united together, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one Holy Spirit, since the same Holy Spirit fills each life. For the human body does not consist of one part, but of many limbs and organs. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that reading. Amen. Amen. So, so we see here that um, this um, part, this, the epistle, this epistle of First Corinthians was not written to one person. It was talk, It was. It was referring to the whole body of Christ here. Amen. Amen. So he wasn't talking about one person having the whole of the gift, but he was talking about the whole body how the Lord distributes to individuals in the body each gift, amen? And it is to profit, amen? It is to profit the body of Christ, hallelujah. So First Corinthians is not a letter written to an individual. It is a letter written to the whole church. Some have thought that this verse applied to an individual, but Paul was telling the whole church to covet these gifts. What does it mean to covet a gift? It means to have a strong desire for it. Okay. Amen? To have a strong desire for it. You see, covetousness has its positive side and negative side. Okay. But in this case, 
to convert the spiritual gift is the positive side of it. That means to have a strong desire to want in it. Amen. Hallelujah. So one of the ways that we can see to be to one of the ways that the Bible is telling us how to access this gift is first a strong desire for it. Okay. Hallelujah. If you don't have a strong desire for it, you probably might not operate in it. Hallelujah. And when you have a strong desire for it, for something, you would do everything. You would seek God's face. You would pray. You will fast. You would wait on the Lord for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. You would study about it because this is a strong desire. You want to operate in it. You want to know. Like what we're doing now, we're studying it. We want to know much about it. Hallelujah. And as we're doing this, we're not just doing it just by looking at the scripture. When we leave here, we go and seek God's face and pray concerning this gift. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible means to covet, to covet it. Hallelujah. To have a strong desire for it. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So here it says, then as the whole body of, uh, as the whole body coverts them, the spirit will divide to every man severally as he wills. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. As we covet this gift, what would happen is as a body, when we convert this gift, the Lord will distribute to every one of us as he wills. Amen. Amen. It's not as I will. Yeah. Yeah. It's as he wills. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some people have got themselves mixed up in, in the gift of the spirit because they, they, they just try to see, they just want to just flow in it just like that as they feel or as they will. But no, it's as the Lord wills. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the spirit will divide to every man severally as he wills. Paul infers here that not every man is going to have all these gifts. Amen. So it's not everyone that will have all these gifts. Mm. Amen. It's not everybody that will have everything. But the Lord will distribute to individual mm. as he wills. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm laying this foundation before I start actually talking about any of this gift because it's important for us to actually know all this before we now start talking about the gift. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we know where we stand um, as a result of the gift of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Gabriel, can I ask a question quickly? Yes, sir. How is it possible that churches don't believe in the fivefold ministries and the gifts of the Spirit? How is it possible if then they don't believe the Word of God? Because the Spirit of God came on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and empowered Him. You know, so they tell me that the teaching is actually far from the Word of God. Because I know a particular church right now that doesn't believe in talking in tongues, doesn't believe in hands. So that is a confusion for them, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, sir, Bishop, you know what really happens to such people? What they normally do is um, they take a particular verse in the scripture and make a doctrine out of it. Mm. And then when they make a doctrine out of just one verse in the particular verse in the scriptures, they've not taken the whole counsel of God concerning what they're trying to build a doctrine on. Mm -hmm. So they take a verse and try to build a doctrine, what they do is they, they, they just, they, they go off, off the rail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... Like, for example, they use a scripture like um, um, that tongues are seized. There's a particular place in the scripture where it talks about hmm. tongues seizing. Hmm. You understand? And then actually when he talked about that, it didn't mean that we can't speak in tongues. Hmm. That's a different meaning of what it and what he's saying, but we're going to come down to there. Ooh. Okay, okay. No, 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 Bishop. No, I'm not saying that I can't answer it now. No, no, no. no. That's what I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I'm just saying that um, 
you know, we will, we will go into that and we will look at all these teachings that these people, um, they, they, they pull from the word of God. Mm -hmm. and the, <laughs> let me actually, let's look at it actually. Quickly. Okay. Um, I think it's first, first, hold on. Let me go to King James and then amplify it. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So likewise, yeah. Okay. I think he's in um Okay, I'll, I'll look for it. I will look for it. Yes. Okay, Pastor G, it's all good. Oh, no worry. It's all good. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it's in First Corinthians chapter 13. Verses eight to ten. Let's open it quickly. Um, they are actually trying to explain something out of context. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, when he was talking about love in the Bible, how many of us remember that? Um, he says, um, if we look at it, um, verses eight, he says, "Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail; whether there be tongues." they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So they take this scripture and try to explain a way that tongues are ceased, prophecies are ceased, Hallelujah. Amen. So that's where they come up with that doctrine of saying that it's not for us today, which is, which is not, which is not true. Because if you look at verses 10, it says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away, be done away. Christ is not come yet. We're still here on earth. Amen. And um, the gift is still in operation in the body of Christ at the moment. Hallelujah. So Christ is not, is not come yet because he's the one that is the perfect one. Hallelujah. That is to come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So right now. Let me check verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 13. Maybe that is the verse. Verse 8. Yes, yes, yes. I read from 8 to 10. It says, charity never fails. Yeah. Never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Mm. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. But it's not saying it ceased. Yeah, cease. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He says, whether there be knowledge, it shall, be, it shall vanish away. He says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. Hallelujah. So here he's saying, we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. It's not saying that prophecy is ceased. It's not saying tongues are ceased. Amen. So this is where these people bring their doctrine from and try to say, today, we don't need to prophesy anymore. 
We don't need to speak in tongues anymore in the church because the Bible says it has ceased. But no, that's not what he's talking about. The Bible was actually explaining about perfect love. Amen. I don't know. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Everybody's kind of like, oh, what's going yes, on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Oh, got you. Got you. Got you. <laughs> But we're going to explain further on as we, we go on in the gift of that. I just wanted to just give us a quick scripture of where these people are getting their information from. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. According to that scripture, he's not saying that um, prophecy is ceased, nor tongue is ceased. Amen. He's just saying about when the perfect, when, when, the, when the perfect comes, which is Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we go back to where we were. You have so, a question there, Pastor G. Your uh, wife has got a question. Your wife has got a question, Vicky. Yes. He looks really scared now, Bishop. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, you know, 1 Corinthians 12, 29. Yes. That's another one that they tend to use. Yes. Yeah. Where it says that all apostles are all prophets, are all teachers, that actually not everybody... And then it goes to all speak with tongues, mm. that it's not for everybody. These are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all, um, are, um, are all workers of miracles, have all the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gift and show I unto you a more excellent way. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is actually, this, this, is, this is talking uh, more on the, um, the ministerial gifts. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, apostles, prophets, and all teachers, you see that. And these are all ministerial gifts and all workers of miracles. Um, and the workers of miracles there, if you look at it, um, if we look at the um, if we look at the ministerial gift, we know we are there are apostles, prophets, teachers, and the people that actually operate more in miracles when they are ministering evangelists. Amen. So you see there, he didn't put evangelists, but he used all workers of miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that 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 and that's also a spiritual gift. But in context to this scripture, he's talking about the ministerial gifts. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you can see actually the verse before the 28. He says, and God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. The gift of healing helps government these are ministerial gifts in the body of christ but you will see that miracles and gift of healing he didn't use evangelist but from the first um, mention of the ministerial gift in there we know he's actually emphasizing here more on ministerial gift rather than spiritual gift amen praise the lord jesus christ we can go and study it again and find out. We will see, we go back and study it. Um, and we will see that he is talking more on ministerial gift here rather than um, spiritual gift. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's, I know, I know there's going to be a lot of questions on this on spiritual gift. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord help me with this one. Amen. Hallelujah. So James is, James is off tonight. James is off tonight. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul infers here that not every man is going to have all these gifts. Amen. Because he said, for to one, not to everyone. Amen. He says to one, hallelujah, is given a word of wisdom to another, a word of knowledge. Hallelujah. Some have taken this out of this out of um, the setting and have thought that the Bible was talking or telling the individual to desire all this gift. So the Bible is not actually telling you to desire all the gift. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we see from Paul's explanation, he's saying that this gift will be divided among the brethren. Hallelujah. To one is given. Hallelujah. Is given this. So that's why, as the body of Christ, we walk as one body. We don't walk as separate bodies. Amen. We don't walk as individuals, sorry, in the body of Christ. We don't say, oh, um, Bishop can do his own thing. Um, James can do his own thing. Um, Brother Ian can do his own thing. No, actually, God has given every one of us this particular gift so that when we bring everything together, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, what it does, it edifies the church. Amen. Some people might operate in the world of wisdom. And there are times that there will be, and there will be time that the word of wisdom is needed in the operation in church so that it can send the church, give the church a direction on where they have to go. Hallelujah. But if, if, if every one of us is operating in the word of knowledge or everyone is operating on one particular gift, then we'll be lacking in some areas. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why the Bible says is given to individual, is distributed, so that now we'll be working as one. The Bible says as they be, as they were in one accord, the Spirit of God came upon them. Amen. The church is designed to work together as one, both locally, hallelujah, and even um, how do I put it? Locally and what was the next word, I mean? Corporately. Sorry? Co corporately. Exactly. Both locally and corporately. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you see in some churches, um, they will invite certain person to come and minister because they can operate on a particular gift in order to lead the church in a particular direction. Amen. As the spirit wills. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's why the Bible says that individually to one is giving this, to the other one is giving this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul was telling the church as a group to covet them. He was taken to the whole, like now every one of us, the spirit is instructing us to covet this spiritual gift as a body. So as we covet it, and as we pray and seek God's face, the Holy Spirit will, div will, will distribute it to individuals as he wills. Amen. So don't go saying, oh, brother James, wow, man, that guy is operating in the, in this, in the world of wisdom. I want to be like brother James. Oh, I want to do exactly like brother James. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to be exactly like Bishop. Oh, I want to be exactly like Sister Helen. No, 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 no. Look at our, our palms. The Bible says, you know, this it's not the same. Everybody is unique. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody's DNA is unique. That means God, what you, God has created you for, he's created you for it for a purpose. Hallelujah. And you are unique in your own specific area that God has called you into. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So your prayer should be, Lord, reveal to me that which you have created me for. Because nobody will be able to do it as perfect as you will do it. Although God can raise somebody else to do the work, but they probably won't do it the way God has assigned you to do it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So... Paul was telling the church as a group to covet them. Then if they do, the spirit will divide to every man severally as he wills. Not as I will, not as you will, but as the spirit wills. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, there's something that we also have to understand about the new, about, about Christianity. We have to understand. Oh, Bishop, I, should I speed up, sir? It seems you're telling me to speed up. <laughs> <laughs> my my mistake i'm trying something here sorry my apologies praise the lord jesus christ okay <laughs> um the gift of the spirit here we have to understand that the new testament describes 
Christianity as a supernatural way of life. Amen. Christianity, amen, is described in the New Testament as a supernatural way of life. Amen. To be functioning members of the body of Christ, as well as more effective witness for him in the world, we need an understanding of the nine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit and their operations in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we look at now what the gift, what is what, what the gift is about in the body of Christ. So the gift of the Spirit, what it does is that it proclaims Jesus as Lord. Amen. That's what the gift of the spirit does. It proclaims Jesus as Lord. Always remember that. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So if we look at um, verses 2, um, Look at what people and Paul was talking about in that first Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 2. I want somebody to read it. Are you there? Was that first Corinthians chapter 12 verses 2? 12 verses 2. Yes, it says, um, you know. That when you were pagans, you were led off after speechless idols. Mm -hmm. However, you were led off, whether by impulse or habit. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why I said that the gift of the Spirit proclaims Jesus as Lord is because during that time, the Corinthian, there was something that was peculiar about the church at Corinth at the time. Amen. The people previously worshipped idols. So you see Paul now saying in verses 2, he says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away Unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Amen. So these people previously worshipped idols. So in this idol worship, so in this idol worship, motivated by the wrong spirit, they said a lot of things in error. They said a lot of things in error. So some of them were manifesting the move of God, but actually they were saying some things in error. So Paul was trying to address the church that, look, no man speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. That spirit, your gift, is actually given. It is there to lift up the name of Jesus as Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are some people with some strange spirit, you know, in operation, even in the church today. Do you know that there are some people that are still consulting the dead in the church? And they see that as a spiritual gift that they can, they can consult and they can, they can reach out to the dead in, in the spirit realm and they can be receiving information from the dead. That's not the spirit of God. That's not a spirit that lifts the name of Jesus. That's not a spirit that lifts Jesus, that makes that, that proclaims that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's a spirit that actually diverts the mind of people into something else. It's doctrines of devils, the Bible call it. And it says in the last days, many people will begin to operate in the doctrines of devils. I'm telling you something that actually I've been to a church, a tongue-talking church, a spirit, I mean, a tongue-talking church that we visited and somebody came and asked me a question about speaking to a dead person. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Asked a few years ago. Amen. So it's important that we have to be vigilant and we have to know 
doctrinally what is right and what is wrong. In fact, God says that this thing was an abomination to him in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And if we open our Bibles to Deuteronomy, let's open quickly to Deuteronomy. I don't want us to show, I want to show us this. Deuteronomy chapter. Eighteen and verses nine. I'm going to read from the Amplified. It says, "When you enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable, repulsive practice of those nations." There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice, one who uses divination or fortune telling, or who practice witchcraft, or one who interprets omen or a sorcerer, or one who casts a charm or spell, or a medium or a spiritist, or a necromancer who seeks the dead. For everyone who does this thing is utterly repulsive to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord, your God, is driving them out before you. You see, there are some spiritist church. Did you know that there are some spiritist church? You've got to be careful. Everyone that calls themselves, I'm a Christian. Hey, I'm a Christian. You know, before in those days when, when the Christianity was, um, when um, in, in those days in Christianity, when Christian, um, Christianity was well spread all around the world and everybody were true to the faith. And somebody tells you, I'm a Christian. You can take the word for it and say, yes, oh yes, I'm a Christian. But in these days, in these last days, if somebody says, I'm a Christian, you need to ask questions. Oh, so what, what, what's your belief? What do you believe? What's your, what do you stand on? What's your faith? And if they don't say Jesus Christ is Lord, if they don't mention that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and only he is their Lord, then there's something wrong. You get people that will come and tell you that, ah, yes, come to our gathering today. Today is the time to seek um, our, our, our relations that has passed so many years ago. There's a way we will have a, a time of fellowship. We've got to be very, very careful in these last days. This kind of spiritual gifts are not the spiritual gift that the Bible is talking about. The Corinthian believers, they just came out of, they just came out of such idol worshiping. They just came into Jesus. So they've not fully known the knowledge of God. They've not fully been taught the word of God. So Paul had to come to Corinth and begin to teach them about what the gift of the spirit is and not in those things that they were operating in. So you see, he mentioned it. He says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away among these dumb idols, even as you were led. So these people previously had the war, worshipped, had worshipped idols. In this idol worship, motivated by the wrong spirit, they said a lot of things in error. Christian history tells us that some of them came into the Christian assembly and when the, the spirit of God began to manifest himself, they would say things under the influence of a wrong spirit. So some people, they, 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 they actually um, they manifest or they are under an influence of a wrong spirit. And the reason why the church fell for it is because they do not understand how the gift of the spirit flows and what the gift of the spirit is. So like, I don't know if you remember the, the lady that was with the, with, when Paul and somebody was preaching in the book of Acts, I don't know if you remember. And she kept on saying, hey, look, these are men of God. These are men of God, which preach, which preach, which speak the word of God. The Bible says after so many days, she kept on saying it. All of a sudden, Paul was grieved in his spirit. He turned back and he rebuked that spirit of divination. She was correct that they were children of God. They were speaking the oracles of God. They were men of God. She was right about it, but she was saying it in, under the wrong influence. Hallelujah. So the church has to be very, very careful in these last days. Look. Not everybody that is ministering under a spirit that is the Holy Spirit. 
You see, this is why we need the discerning of spirit, which is one of the spiritual gifts. So if we're operating in it, you know, as watchmen in the church, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When we're in the church, especially when um, we have all sorts of people coming into the church, hallelujah, God has placed watchmen, intercessors, people that are spirit-filled in the church, full of the spirit, full of the gift of the spirit. As soon as they see the spirit in operation, the Holy Spirit is able to preach them in their spirit, prompt them in their spirit and say, hey, hey, hey. This is not the right spirit operating in here. Amen? Because all sorts of people come into the gathering, onto the assembly. So it's important that we also operate in this gift. And not just that, to find out what wrong spirit somebody is operating on. But there's other things that God wants to reveal to us, like the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy the gift of healing. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, we're not, we're, I'm just laying a foundation. Please understand we're laying a foundation here. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Where was I? Yes, yeah, so some of them even would arise in the service when the gift of inspiration and all trance were in operation, and they would say that Jesus was accursed in those days, in that time. So Paul was addressing it. Hey, 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 guys, no, no, no. That is not the right spirit. If the spirit, if the gift of the spirit is in operation, it would glorify the name of Jesus and also um, reveal that Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know the reason. So if I ask the question, what is the reason for the gift of the spirit? Why is it there? What does it do? What is the importance of it? We know it is to proclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul said that when the Holy Spirit is in operation, he will proclaim Jesus as Lord. Verses 3. That's what Brother James. Brother James, please, can you read verses 3, sir? Okay, let me go verse 3 here. Yes. The verse 3 says, therefore, I want you uh, to know that no one speaking by the power and influence of the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cast, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. So he says, if it is an utterance gift, then of course the Holy Spirit will say that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Or if it is any of the gifts, they will always uplift the lordship of Jesus. Amen? Not the lordship of some man. You see, sometimes as well, um, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember that. Um, there, was a, there was a cult, actually. And um, in some way in Asia, I'm trying to remember that cult. They basically lifted the man of God. The man of God actually, they, they would they would look, they would lift this man up as if he's Jesus himself. They gave all the titles of Jesus to this man. The man, the congregation that he has, I'm telling you, somewhere in Asia, I can't remember. I will find out the name of it, and I'll maybe next week we'll talk about it. The man is dead now today. He never rose again because they thought he was going to rise again. He never rose again. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And they, they worship this man. They gave, him, they, they, they gave him the title that belongs to Jesus. So it, so it is not to lift up a man's name. It is to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So they will, not, um, they will not attract attention to man, but rather to Christ. So the gift is not to attract attention to man, though God will use man to manifest this gift, 
but it is not to attract attention to the individual, but it is to attract attention to Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So um, I'm reading verses three. It says, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus a cursed. So you can be sure that if one is exercising one of the vocal gifts and calls Jesus a cursed or speaks against him in any way, that is not the Holy Spirit speaking. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So who let's let me let, let's let's now look at it now, actually. Which other religion would talk about Jesus in a way that is not Lord? Islam. They, 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 they talk as if they are speaking as the mouthpiece of God, but they never speak as Jesus Christ as Lord. They only speak as Jesus Christ as a prophet. So we know that they are operating under a different spirit. Amen. You see, don't let don't be deceived. A Muslim man will come to you and says the God of the Christian is the same God of the Muslims. We are the same. It's just that we don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, but we believe he's a prophet. Straight away, you should identify that such person is not speaking by the inspiration of God. He's not speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He is speaking by the inspiration. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Hallelujah. Of a wrong spirit. John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Let's look at it. Amen. Brother James has just put a scripture up quickly. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take that, uh, will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul said that no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He is saying that if a man is speaking by his right spirit, he will say that Jesus is Lord. So lacking understanding, many people try to operate a gift without the spirit. Perhaps the gift has been manifested in their lives on occasion and they think, I have it now and I can operate it at will. So some people might have operated in, in the gift of the spirit as well sometimes. This is our foundation. Amen. We're going to talk about the gift. Just because they've, 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 they've operated in that gift once does not mean that they can all of a sudden make that gift work all the time just like that without the move of the spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, however, when they do, they invariably get into trouble. They are throwing themselves wide open to satanic deception. When we get away from the word, Satan will accommodate us. So when we get away from the word, guess what? The wrong spirit will come in operation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus. That's why it's important for us to know about this gift. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to hold on now and ask any question before I go on. And just give me one minute, please. I'll be back. <laughs> So church, all of us need to understand what God has given us. He has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us. It is through the Holy Spirit we can do all things. And we have to operate with the gifts that the Lord gave to the body of Christ. 
Now, can we imagine we all are prophets or we all apostles and all are one or the other? The church cannot operate like that, same as your body. You need your eyes, your ears, your lips, your heart. So that is what the body, of, that's why the Holy Spirit came to complete us through the Holy Ghost. And you can operate in the gift God has gave you. The same as your family, you've got a husband, you've got a wife, you've got children. That is the body of the house that God has in, in, he, he made it very clear. So the church cannot operate just on one function. It has different ladders of functions that makes the church complete. So I hope that makes sense. Amen. Our teacher is back. Thank you, sir. You unmute yourself, please. Amen. Praise there the Lord. Go. Bless you, sir. Now, we're going to look at diversities of gifts. Paul went on to say, now there are diversities of gifts. Amen. The word diversity means different. Amen? It says there are diversities of gifts. There are different kind of, there are different gifts. Hallelujah. So, in other words, Paul was saying there are different gifts, but the same spirit. It's not coming from any other, it's not coming from different sources. Is coming from one source and coming directly from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I would rather it come directly from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So the same Spirit says, and there are different of administrations, but the same Lord. Amen? And difference of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Also, I'm just going to explain two theories on this particular scripture. Two theories on this particular scripture I just read. One line of thought says that these gifts are administered to different ones in different ways. They say diversities of operation means the gift of the spirit operates in different ways and not always the same way in different individuals. That's the first theory. I'll read it again. One line of thought says that these gifts are administered to different ones in different ways. So basically, if the gift is going to be in operation in this person, it's going to be different in operation in this particular person. That's what he's saying here. He said, they say diversities of operation means the gift of the spirit operate in different ways and not always the same way in different individuals. On the other hand, there are those who believe that the diversities of operation is not referring to gift at all. These people maintain that just as there are different gifts of the spirit, there are also different administrations of the spirit as well as different operations of the spirit. They say Paul is talking here about three different things, gifts, administrations, and operation, not just about gifts. But if we look at verses seven of that scripture, it says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with her. Notice he's calling these gifts manifestations. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's calling these gifts manifestation. So the manifestation of them is given to profit with her. Hallelujah. 
So the gift is the manifestation. Amen. And it is given to profit without. So they are given to profit the whole church, not an individual. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm coming up, Sister Ludi. Don't worry. <laughs> I've seen, I know you've got a question. So then, then Paul went on to say, for to one is given by the Spirit the word. Amen. It's given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Verses 8. And he goes on to list nine manifestations. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are nine manifestations of this gift. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we're going to have to, you see, for us to be able to identify these gifts, we're going to divide them into three categories so that we would know, we'll be able to identify them. Amen. Somebody says, uh, like the way somebody puts it, he puts it this way. He says, one of them says something. I mean, three of them says something. Three of them do's, do something, amen? And three of them reveal something. So three of them says something, three of them do something, and three of them reveal something. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I said again, three of those gifts, they say something, the utterance gift. Three of them, they do something. The miracle gift, amen. And three of them reveal something. Amen, the revelation gift. So when we are able to list them into three different ways, we're able to understand them better. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we put them into categories, I'm going to um, allow Sister Ludi to ask her question. Sister Ludi. Hello, Pastor Gabriel. Um, I did, uh, what did I say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what was my question? <laughs> I did write it down and uh, I can't remember. Uh, wait a minute. How can how can you? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. My question was, how do you know exactly if the Holy Spirit has come to you? Or how can you tell if that's the Holy Spirit itself? Um, first of all, we, we like we said earlier on, there is no way whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking through this gift, we say that he comes to glorify the name of Jesus. That's one of the points that we highlighted at first. Um, it says non, nobody operating in this gift call it Jesus accursed. You know, but anyone that is speaking through this gift, he says, um, he, he says when they're speaking through this gift, they, they, they lift up the name of Jesus and declare Jesus Christ, proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, if whatever is being revealed is not, doesn't line up with the word of God, then we know that it is not. Because the word of God is what we use. It's our, um, is our, is our, is what we check. We check with the word of God. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, then we know that this is not of God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And also, Pastor Gabriel, so um, when you speak in thanks, does it mean, does it necessarily mean that the Holy Spirit is in you? Okay. And this is, this is a long one. And this is a long question. And um, I, I, I know what you're coming, what you're talking because it's not all people that are Christians or filled with the spirit that speak in tongues. There are other people in different cults that speak in their own kind of tongues. They speak yes. in the tongue of devil. But what I know is as a child of God filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. you speak in tongues. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how I know what from your question you're saying, is it everybody that speaks in tongues that is filled with the Holy Spirit? If you're not a Christian, if you're not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, then yeah. if you speak in tongues, then we know that it's not the, that kind of tongue is not the God kind of tongue. You get what I'm saying? Yes. If you're, filled, if you're born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and you speak in, the, in an unknown tongue, we know that it's from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if they are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, and they as, and as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they, they, they spoke in tongues. So these are one of the evidence. These are one of the things that happens when one is filled with the Holy Spirit. So I think maybe I've been able to answer your question. I just know that if, as long as you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that's what matters. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, some people can come into the church and try to want to imitate those people speaking in tongues. They're not saved. They don't know anything, but they want to just, oh, let, let's, okay, let's just try and be part of them and just start to say to stuff they don't even know themselves. It's yeah. possible. So therefore, so when you speak in tongues, is it is that is it a gift exactly from the Holy Spirit? Of course, right. Speaking in the, 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 the gift of tongue is is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank this you very as, much. This as the Spirit gave them all trance, they spoke as the Spirit gave them all trance in the book of Acts. Amen. If we look at them, Acts, Amen. Chapter, Acts chapter two, I think, and this is four. Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, chapter yes it says and in verses 4 it says and they were all filled that is I feel throughout their beings with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues different languages the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. Oh, what, what chapter is that again? Sorry. Acts chapter Acts. 3 and verses 4. I'm reading from Amplified. I can read from a different one. Let's look at... Um, Acts chapter 4. Chapter 2 and verses 4. Sorry. Thank you. So it says... Acts chapter and, uh, 2. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 4. Yeah. So have I been able to answer your question? Yes, Pastor Gabriel. Thank you very much. Amen. You. Yeah, we've got five minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let us now divide this thing into the three categories that we talked about. So the simplest way to describe these three, this nine gift is that three of them say something, like I said earlier on, it says something, three of them do something, and three of them reveal something. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so excited about describing this thing when we start going into them, because you would actually realize that when we begin to talk about this gift, you will actually realize that actually, at some point in my life, the Lord has actually wanted to use me in this area, but I was kind of like thinking, oh, is this just me? Is this just my head? Is this just me thinking or this thing? But when we begin to look at how it's been in operation in the Bible, we will look at how the gift was in operation in the old and in the new. And when we now begin to pray and ask God, you will find out that you will find your place. You will find your own place in the plane where the Holy Spirit will begin to use you in certain areas. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So the three gifts that say something are the gift of utterance. So the gift that says something are the gift of utterance. Amen. I want you to put that down. And I'm going to list them. The utterance gift, so I'll be using it interchangeably. Utterance gift, or I might say the gift that says something, is the same thing. Amen? So the, 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 the gift that actually says something, or the utterance gift, is the gift of prophecy. How many of us know that when prophecy is given, it is spoken forth, isn't it? Amen? Hallelujah. 
So the gift that the gift that the utterance gift is the gift of prophecy. The next one is diverse kinds of tongues. Amen. Remember, he's talking about when he says diverse kinds of tongues, it means there are different kinds of tongues here. He's talking about. Amen. We're going to explain that. Amen. Hallelujah. So the next one is diverse kinds of tongues. And the third one is interpretation of tongues. Can somebody name them for me? The utterance gift. What are the utterance gifts? If you say, what are the utterance gifts? Or what are the, um, the gifts, the spiritual gift that says something? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a prophecy. Yes. A diverse kind of tongues. Yeah. An interpretation of tongues. An interpretation of tongues. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Please don't forget that our memory verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1, where it reads, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Amen. That's our memory verse. And I'm going to be asking it throughout this teaching. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've talked about the utterance gift. Amen. So the three gifts that do something is the next one we're doing are the gift of power. Is the power gift. Amen. And they are the gift of faith. Amen. The next one is the walking of miracles. Amen. And the gifts of healing. The gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. In the original Greek, um, let me just um, um, point something clear as well of, 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 uh, pertaining to this, this gift. In the original Greek, every time this third power gift is mentioned, both gifts and healing, which is the, the, the third one is the gifts of healing. You notice it says gift as in plural, gifts, plural, of healings. So he's saying that in the original Greek, every time this third power gift is mentioned, both gifts and healing are in plural. So gifts of healing. This isn't always translated correctly in the King James Version. So there is no such thing as the gift of healing that is singular. So the three gifts that, okay, sorry. So there's no such thing as the gift of healing, which is the gift plural, I mean, I mean singular of healing, singular. It is the gifts of healing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are various gifts of healing. Hallelujah. And we can tell from the word of, from the word of God. Let's look at it, for example. Jesus Christ, when he was going, he says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. In my name shall they cast out devils. Amen. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Isn't it? Amen. So we know that um, at some point we can lay hands on the sick and they recover. At, uh, at, a, at a particular point in the Bible in James chapter 5 and verse 14, he says, is anyone sick among you? Let them call the elders. Let them anoint him with oil. Amen. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Amen. So we see these are different gifts. Some people operate in the gift, in, the, in that gift of anointing people with oil. Some people operate in that gift of just laying hands on people and they recover. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are different various gifts, depending on how the Holy Spirit is leading you to walk in the gifts of healings. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Then the last three. Amen. The last three gifts that reveal something are the gifts of revelation. 
the gift of revelation is the same thing as the gift that reveals something. Amen. So they are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. You mind repeating it? We're just writing it down if you don't mind. Yes, sir. The gift, the, the, the three gifts that reveal something are the gifts of revelation. Amen. They are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And just lastly, something I just need to let, highlight for you. These gifts are listed in order of their importance. So I'm talking about the last three gifts I'm talking about. They are listed in their order of importance. You will see it in the scripture. It says the word of wisdom, the world of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So of these three gifts. So these three are listed in order of their importance. So the three gifts of revelation, that is the revelation gift. The word of wisdom is the best gift. Amen. Of the three gifts of power, the gift of faith is the best gift. Then lastly, of the three gifts of utterance, the gift of prophecy is the best gift. Amen? But of course, we know that the best gift in any situation is the gift that is most needed at that time. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that, okay, let's, for example, we, this, the word of wisdom is needed. And I'm going to define what each of all these gifts are so that we understand what they are. Amen. It's important we know what they are. And they are easy to know. Once we describe it, you will like, okay, well, and I will show you where, for example, let's just, let's, let, me, let, me, let me give an example of word of knowledge. You see, how many of us, we've, we did the book of Revelation, didn't we? How was it possible for John to know exactly what was wrong with the church, with the churches, with the seven churches. It was a gift in operation. And it was the gift of the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is a gift that reveals certain facts of what has happened in the past or what is happening in the past or presently. That's the word of knowledge. So the Holy Spirit reveals, for example, um, there might be a problem in the church right now and the church have been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and there's nothing, no answer, nothing has come up. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reveals something to the man of God or to somebody in the house. Tell the man of God that this and this needs to be sorted out. Amen. That's the word of knowledge coming. He says, he says, look, this person or this particular thing has been happening for so long. And man of God, you need to put it to stop. That is the word of knowledge. Now it comes, why? So that the church can be edified. So that certain things does not stop the flow of the spirit in the body of Christ. So the spirit is laying it in the heart of somebody to tell somebody about it. Amen. But we will talk about the word of knowledge next week. Amen. Let me just leave it there. We will begin to look at those gifts one by one. Amen. And we're going to pray after each 
and every teaching so that the Lord can pour afresh on us those gifts in the body that we might walk in it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want us to bow down our head and just begin to thank the Lord. Unmute yourself and let's thank him this evening for his word <laughs> over our life. Thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you for tonight, Lord Jesus. I worship you, I worship you for your teaching tonight, Lord. Thank you for the man of God that you can use in such a powerful way. We thank you for the anointing upon his life, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the grace that you bestowed upon him, Lord. That we need to hear this stuff in, in time, the truth and nothing but the truth. And so we, God, we thank you for the revelation, the manifestation, and thank you that we could discern, Lord, because of your Holy Spirit loving us. Thank you for your precious word that revived us and restored us and delivered us and made us whole. We thank you for your presence tonight, Lord. Thank you for this teaching tonight that will help us, Lord, in our journey to destiny to do great things for you. This teaching will help us, Lord, in a time such as this that we will experience an overflow of your presence in our lives through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let the weight of your glory rest upon us. Teach us your way. Touch our understanding. Touch your ears, Lord. It will hear your voice, Lord, and speak the holy oracles of God and deliver our purpose as we pursue you in everything we have and so god we thank you for jesus christ who died and rose again and thank you jesus according to the book of acts you send us the holy ghost thank you for loving and dwelling in us and make us stronger and better believers and trusting the word in jesus name we pray amen Amen. Glory to God. Glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. How many of us have been blessed today? Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. Just bear me a minute. I'm going to just, um, just I'm just putting something on the on the group quickly. Um, I mean, I should give you my... Praise God. Praise the Lord. So I put in the revelation, uh, revelation gift, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, discerning of spirit, the power gift, faith gift of healing. And I'm um, sorry, the power gift, the gift of healing, walking of miracles, and the vocal gift is um, different kind of tongues, interpretation. Amen. The gifts of healing. Praise God. Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm just going to hand over to Bishop now. Well, we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Let us stretch our hands to the man of God.